Hello and welcome to this uh, short video introducing you to A-Level Geography at the Garboy School. My name is Mr Brennan and I'm here today to talk to you about what the course is like, where geography can take you and ultimately hopefully answer any questions you may have. So why should you choose A-Level Geography? Well it's a must-have A-Level according to the Guardian. The Guardian said that it's all the rage, it's a subject for our times which it very much is, it's very relevant and it's soaring in its popularity. This was further backed up by the Russell Group. The Russell Group report, uh, which is a report produced by the top 24 universities in the country, names geography as one of its eight facilitating subjects. And I'll talk about what that means later on. We believe it's a really important A-level, which leads you to a range of courses and also makes you the most employable graduates in the country. Why are you so employable well you've got great job prospects you can see from that image there that unemployment rates are among the lowest for graduates of geography and that's mainly down to things like the wide variety of skills you'll learn in an a-level of geography how to be critically analysis uh, debate and argue your viewpoint reach uh, justified decisions solve problems analyze articles work with maps use modern data uh, or computer-based mapping investigating real issues in the world these are all vital and that leads to a range of jobs and we've had graduates go into law, sciences, uh, the environment, IT, research, banking, engineering, uh, town planning and many, many more. It also opens doors. I mentioned it's a facilitating subject and what this means is at A-level you have a much wider range of options to you at university. An A-level qualification in any facilitating subject will keep open a number of degree courses. You can see that that's backed up by this infographic, which shows that of the 82% of A-level geographers that went to university, only 18% carried on with an actual geography degree. The rest went into arts, humanities, social sciences, or sciences, including things like medicine. So it's a really, really good, broad qualification to get. And it's developed through things like the field work that we do. We put the world into a real context. Why at the Garibaldi School? We genuinely believe that we provide a curriculum, a seven year journey, which helps students to understand the interconnected world in which they live. We develop key stage three and four students ready for key stage five and then ready for the next steps in post 16 to 19 education. Students are successful where they've got a great ATL and are actively involved in their learning journey. And we as teachers show them how to uh, be that outstanding student. We model how to learn and how to do that in an independent and confident way. Students at the Garibaldi School do leave their geography education, regardless of length, with a variety of transferable skills, more knowledgeable, more reasoned, and more thoughtful, ready to play their part as a successful adult. So what will you study? Three exams at the end of year 13. Paper one, two hours 15, 30% of the qualification, physical geography, dynamic landscapes, physical systems, and sustainability. Paper two, Human geography, dynamic places, human systems and geopolitics. Again, 30% of your qualification. Paper three is slightly different. That's the synoptic investigation. And you also have one independent investigation, a non-exam piece. So that would be the uh, coursework side of the course. Paper one is involved around four main topics. We've got tectonics. We look at the processes and the disasters and the hazards and the reasons why some places are affected worse than others and we do that through a range of case studies we also look at coasts again builds on your key stage four knowledge and we look at processes happening at the coast management of the coast and why the coast is known as a dynamic area the two new topics are water cycle and water security and carbon cycle and energy security these are two really interesting modern up-to-date topics it talks about how water is essential on the planet and energy how we need to make sure we've got availability for all people and considers how this varies across the globe paper two the more human-based side looks at some topics you've already studied like globalization and how we live in this globally connected village and what impacts there might be of that we look at regenerating places how we upgrade urban areas and rural areas the newer topics are superpowers and migration identity and sovereignty but we have covered bits of this before migration identity and sovereignty links 
to globalisation and links to superpowers because it's about migration and the impact this has on states and identity of a state and the issues this may create. It allows us to create really good balanced arguments based around issues that are modern and up to date. Superpowers is fascinating. It's where we look at the rise of new superpowers globally, uh, potential new superpowers. And we also look at the reasons why the old superpowers, such as Great Britain, are no longer deemed as such. A really interesting set of topics. Paper 3 is slightly different. Paper 3 in the exam, you get a resource booklet. In previous years, this has been about rainforests. This has been about uh, the rise of Southeast Asia. This has been about the economic modelling of Singapore. And within this booklet, you draw out your previous learning. So the things you've learnt in paper one and paper two, which are still relevant, and you apply that to the paper when ultimately making a geographical decision. It's a skills-based paper in the first and foremost instance, and we make sure students are really ready for doing this. Your independent investigation is exactly that. It's a great, great opportunity. Because what it does, it prepares you for doing something like a dissertation at university. Students come up with their own questions. They decide exactly what they want to study. They then go and collect fieldwork. They collect this. Once they've got that, they analyse it. They look at what the evidence shows them, the primary and the secondary data. They present it, and then they produce a piece of written work to support what they've found. It's a really, really good opportunity, like I say, for students to be independent and be ambitious with their learning. So, if you have any further questions about A-level geography, if you're interested, then please speak to myself and my email's there should you need it, or speak to Mr Voice, his email's there too. What we ultimately say is, geographers at Garibaldi are successful, and if you've enjoyed geography in Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, then you will enjoy it at Key Stage 5. Thanks for listening, and I hope this has been informative.